I will now show that the determinant of a triangular matrix, whether lower triangular or upper triangular, is the product of its diagonal entries. And this will immediately imply that the determinant of a diagonal matrix is also the product of its diagonal entries, because diagonal matrices are triangular. In fact, they're both upper and lower triangular. And it will also follow that the determinant of the identity matrix, which is a diagonal matrix with ones on the diagonal, is one. All right, so now let's go ahead and prove this property. We only need to prove it for lower triangular matrices, because by the transpose property, if this holds for lower triangular matrices, it will also hold for upper triangular matrices. So let's imagine that this is a general n by n lower triangular matrix, and let's identify all the non-zero terms from the determinant, because a lot of them will be zero, simply because there are so many zero entries. Well, all of the non-zero terms from the matrix, among the n factorial of them, all of the non-zero ones must use a11 from the first row, simply because all the other entries in the row are zero. So they all must have a11. What about the second row? Well, in the second row, they must utilize a22, because this one is out, the first column has already been spoken for, and the remaining entries are zero. So a22 must be part of it. And by the same token, a33 must be the entry from the third row, and so on until you get to the last row, and you realize that you have to use the entry a and n, because all of the other entries from the last row are already spoken for. So out of the n factorial terms, only a single term survives, and it's the term consisting of the diagonal entries. And because this term represents the zero permutation, whose parity is even, it comes with a plus sign. That's all there is to it. Let's just do one quick example. And the determinant of this matrix is minus 36. And that's all.